Well, welcome back to my Ford Transit campervan build, and this time we're going to be dealing with this area, or the lack of anything in this area. So, generally when I'm going to be living in this full time, it's going to be in Scotland, and Scotland in the winter can get pretty cold. So, it seems a waste to spend all the effort on the insulating the ceiling, the roof, the floors, the heating systems, the insulated uh, window covers, the insulation which have been applied to the doors inside on the rear doors, the insulation on there, and then to have this big open area which is all glass. So I'm going to build a sliding bulkhead door, an insulated sliding bulkhead door. Because I want to keep the door quite lightweight, I'm going to be using um, some, the remaining of the sort of 25mm PIR insulation board. So I'm going to use build a timber frame of lightweight timber which is 25mm thick and then just do the inside of it with this and then cover it on both sides with 5mm ply. And where the door's going to go, because I, I do like having this big open area and be able to sit in these chairs and see out the front and to walk in and out easily, so I don't really want to get rid of that. So, discovered with this, this is about 75 centimetres deep, um, the, this area where the shower room is, so the door can nicely slide into there. Imagine that would be a bit shorter, and then it can, when it slides out, it does a pretty good job at sliding out almost the full width of the van. So the door will probably slide out to about there, and I'll just have to build a tiny sort of pillar or bulkhead there, which could be utilised to hang jackets on or something like that. So I'll make a feature of it, and then when I'll, then I can have it slid open or slid back. So in the evening, I want some privacy, I can close it. Or more importantly, I want the insulation factor, so I don't have three huge glass windows losing all that nice heat. Um, that's going to fix that problem. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to try and keep it really simple. I'm going to utilise this metal bar here, which is the bulkhead, um, where the bulkhead was originally mounted to. It goes all the way. I'm just going to build a bit of timber. And I've gone down to screw fix, and I've bought a sliding door rail. And this one fits perfectly in this gap. Door will just be slid on, to, on there, slid away, and then when I want it out, I'll just slide it out. So first off, I need to measure how big I'm going to need to make the door and then figure out how to mount this. So, let's get on it. I skipped ahead to a little problem problem part is the where this chair comes out to, the door can't actually run completely flat. It's got to be at a slight angle. It's only a few degrees, but it means I need to mount the rail at a slight angle, which just makes life a little bit more complicated because I can't just mount it flat to the back of this. I've got to build some sort of frame which I can then angle when I figure out the door angle. Another job to figure out. So as an example of what I'm thinking, I'm thinking we'll have a piece mounted to the back. So that's going to be mounted to the parcel shelf metal framework. Then a glued and screwed a piece along the top. It's going to give me sort of like an angle. And then the actual rail itself can be mounted on probably a bit of CLS timber, which is slightly thinner. So I can then screw it in there. Uh, but it gives me that space to put that angle in. The other way I was thinking is, it's quite difficult to, I was going to use the bolt holes already existing in that parcel shelf. And it's quite difficult to, well, not mount it flat. And uh, for it to be well supported. And it's going to bridge the gap anyway. So I think that's the route I'm going to go. First beam in place using the original bolt holes. I'm just going to put some repair washers or just some big chunky washers in there so that it's just not the screws themselves putting, the bolts themselves putting through. Next job is to measure sort of the top piece which is going to get mounted to there uh, and get that all sorted out and mounted. Oops. So for attaching the main support to what's mounted into the, the woodwork, I'm just going to be using pocket hole jigs to drill a bunch of holes. Right, now I've got to do the really awkward ones and then tighten it all up, and that is the top bit of the hinge done. So, fitted the bracket overnight, secured it out to the shelf. There is a slight amount of flex in the actual shelf itself though. Um, so I'm just going to put just two screws into the wood here pointing up which is going to hit into the beams 
which make this hopefully just add a little bit more rigidity to this shelf overall. So next job, this is the main beam which the rail is going to be mounted on. The reason I built this system, as I said earlier, is I need the flexibility to be able to, which, when I'm mounting it, have the angle, any angle. And I'm only going to know that angle after I've mounted the door. So the fact that this has got a huge flat area means I can just change the rail position slightly before I do the final mixing. So when the door closes, it doesn't hit the back of the door. Well, that's the plan at least. So if I get the rail attached, I'm just going to do a rough mount and fix it in place because that means after I've got it in place I can then start figuring out the dimensions of the door to build. Right, I'm trying to figure out some dimensions. Right, so the rail is on a temporary mount. And that's generally how it's going to work. So the door hangs off these and we'll have a floor rail when it's mounted. But it's just figuring out the right distance back so that it clears this wall and the door would hang freely and clear the bottom of this seat. Next bit to work out. So for the door to stay in the line on the bottom it has a channel which needs to be routed out. And it's a 16mm by 16mm rebate I need to do. I don't have a 16mm bit, my biggest one is 12 So I'm going to do a few passes and then figure out the rest of the way I'm going to do the rest of the rebate. A couple of hours of faffing later. These are just screwed on. These bolts are for adjustment so I can change the hang of the door. So, so far, happy with that. So I'm going to tart up the door, I'm going to do the, the facing on it, visually finish it, so then I can start hanging it properly. Without a doubt, for doing this, so making the, uh, the ply coverings for it, a router and a flush trim bit is one of the easiest ways of doing it. Right, so I did some test fitting after dark last night. So you saw me last putting on black covering on this side and I've just done some spray carpet on one side and just sorted out the visuals on this side. There's been another video about spray carpet so I didn't think you needed to see that again. Sort of the principle at the minute. Still needs some tweaking. But it's getting there. I'll uh, show you up close. So after the test fit, there's a few things which need changing. For starters, when I built these panels, these carpet lined panels, didn't realize they were going to stick past that much and this just looks a bit naff. So I'm going to take this panel off, shorten it, so when the door's in its recessed position, you're only going to see this grey beam which is going to match the, end, the other side of it. And then I'll have the blue panel and the, the top blue panel just start after you start pulling it out. The other thing to bear in mind is clearances are pretty tight on it. So it does slightly rub the back of here and well, there isn't loads of space. But yeah, there's enough. At least it's going to be a this is not going to let a draft through, and I still need to place the bottom bit as well. So I'll just show you it from the other side. So sort of look at how I wanted it to look. Pretty standard looking bulkhead just from a glance. Right, covered wall in, time to get it hung and see how it looks. So much faffing and fiddling, I'm pretty happy with the run on the door. What it does do is, it's pretty smooth, it does slightly hit this chair, which actually gives it some grip and stops it from sliding, sliding around. 
so, and then it falls, goes back there. So next job is to do the basically the runner for the drawer. So this little pin is going to sit underneath here, and in the bottom of the door I've put a track. So basically the door would run along that, and it doesn't come past it, so it's always going to stay on track, opposed to being able to wobble around. So it's going to mount that next. I've just fitted the pin down there, I've just taken the door stop off so I could do it without taking the door off. So now I need to just close it and then I'll put the, the door stop back on. Right, next job is to make how crappy this looks disappear. So I've been fiddling around basically making a frame for it. Because the wall's going to continue here, I made a little plinth for it to sit on. So more or less, that is the plan at the minute. So I need to assemble it all now, and then when it's assembled I can then start doing the measurements to figure out this part of the wall. Right, let's get on that. So I've currently been working on this little finishing bit here, which is all pretty easy to do apart from the actual bulkhead sort of side, because that's a really weird contouring shape. So I've sort of got, with the wood I've got left, I'm using my scraps to finish it off. I've made sort of the pillar, generally. It's actually straight line, just need to figure out where the bolt holes are. So the way I'm going to do it is, as you've seen on previous videos, I'm just going to use my, uh, there somewhere. I'm going to use a dry marker, colouring the bolt heads, because I put all the bolts in the old bolt holes. Colouring the bolt heads with pen. Put on my piece, get in the right spot. Hopefully, in print all of the ink onto the buttholes. As you can see, ink imprinted on there, so I can draw those out, and then I've got the buttholes put in the right spot. So I've kind of constructed more of what I wanted to do, but I still want to spray carpet it, and I figured out I can't do it, and I'm gonna to have to disassemble everything, take it out, spray carpet individually, and put it back together, and that's gonna be a real pain in the ass. Um, I could spray, spray uh, carpet this side no problem but it was in here which was the issue and then I remembered I fitted this seat and it's literally two bolts and it comes out and it'll give me all the access I need so I'm going to unbolt the seat and spray it in so the next thing I just need to fix after I got this all mounted is just some of these little lips here particularly the slight overlaps on these. Pretty simple way to fix it. You could just use a, a sander, but a multi-tool will also work. Next step, this needs a bit of insulation. I mean, it's only five mil ply. The door's insulated, as you've seen, but this isn't. So I'm just gonna be applying some seven mil uh, closed cell foam, it's self adhesive on both sides. I'll actually do a good job at doing a bit of insulation. One of the reasons I wanted to make the bolt cut is it's cold in the cab. But nice and toasty and warm in here because I've had the heater on. So I'm really glad I've insulated this. And well, that was the finished on spray carpet on with an out any missing, well, without any footage. Mainly because either I've lost the footage or the 
SD card filled up. Because at the point when I was filming all of this, I think all of my hard drives were full, and I had a stack of about eight SD cards worth of different footage on different things. Uh, now I've got a new um, hard drive, so I've got all that footage on. I can't seem to find the footage of me finishing the spray carpet in. But you've already seen spray carpet in, so not a big loss. Um, and that's pretty much going to draw the close end of the video. We've got no handle on this side, or either side, but I've kind of found it's not massively necessary. I built uh, a little floor to fill in that gap, particularly where when this chair was removed it sort of left an open area. I just bought some of the same rubber stuff you find um, in the front of the cab and just reused it there. And if I'm honest, I really like the ability to be able to the ability to be able to sort of walk through just to my little finished bits to do, I just need to finish off a little bit of trim on here to cover that up with that bit of wood. And for an actual locking mechanism to stop it sliding, I haven't quite figured that out yet. Uh, I find it's generally quite stiff, but if I do take a corner quite fast, I can get the door to open and close. So I might just use some heavy duty uh, magnet latches, which I think for most of the time are going to be okay. Um, yeah, anything else? Well, maybe a bit of a... A sneak peek, you may have noticed that there, which is one of the most asked questions about where the bed is for the van. That is the bed. Um, or in its folded up position, and you'll see how that pans out um, later on. So, once again, thank you much for joining me. Um, I'll see you next time. Any questions, shoot them over to me on Instagram. Um, yeah, like and subscribe if you've enjoyed what you've seen. If not, fair enough. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye. Little post outro bit, not sure why I filmed the outro when I did because I hadn't finished doing the door. So, done the little bit of trim on the inside just to neaten up and get rid of that bit of wood. Now, let's go into the back of the van. Basically, I need to decide what to do with this bit. It's a bit blank at the minute. I feel like I want to put something on it, but there's not much clearance. So, uh, any ideas of what I should do with this door? Just make it visually look a bit different or anything like that? Post that in the comments below. I'm thinking I might put one of them little sort of like peepholes you have on. Is that the right word? On doors, a little eye, eye bit where you can look through and see what's going on, on the other side. Like you get on hotel room doors and stuff like that. That might be a nice little feature to see. So I could just have a peep out the front if I hear anything. Add a bit of functionality. Also added some some hooks on here so I can hang hang jackets. Um, yeah, so that is the end of this video this time. Um, Bye again.